Jumelan Jumelang, how's it and welcome to yet another edition of our weekly top 10s. Today we'll be hitting you with a young throwback that is of course a reflection of the top 10 worst scandals to have ever endured as a nation. Without wasting any more time, let's get political. Our first entry at number 10 is Mfulen Municipality. The municipality has been in the news in the past few years for scandalous corruption. To date, the municipality has bled an amount of 870 million rands, which equates to about 57 million dollars to fruitless, unnecessary spending. When news of the corruption surfaced in 2018, former Mayor Simon Mofogeng resigned after he was found to have misspent about 1.7 million rands on KFC and Nando's meals. Like really? Coming in at number 9 is the notorious VBS saga. Termed the greatest heist of the post-apartheid South Africa, the row involved several officials of the VBS Mutual Bank benefiting unduly from funds which belong to the bank and its investors, which are primarily the poor in surrounding areas. The looting of these funds amounted to 2 billion rand. Several officials, politicians were implicated in the VBS saga, including the Bavenda King and Flochi Bambu amongst others. It was also found that corrupt activities had long been going on at the bank since 14 municipalities in South African provinces were implicated. At number 8 is the now infamous Bosasa now known as African Global Operations, implicated several officials of the state, including ministers. Among those implicated in this web of corruption is President Cyril Ramaphosa, who was investigated by the public protector for a 500,000 rand donation he had received from Bosasa for his 2017 campaign CR17. Others implicated were Saudi Mutsweneng, Lindiwe Sisulu, and Dr. Hotso Devere. Number 7 goes to the Gupta Gate, one of the most infamous scandals of the past decade. The Gupta family was accused by various government officials of looting state funds. The two public servants who were at the forefront of the accusations were Feiki Mentor and Mkrebisi Jonas. The Gupta family had invaluable contracts with and sometimes overreaching influence in state-owned enterprises such as the South African Airways, the South African Broadcasting Commission, as well as ESCO. The sixth spot goes to the SARS Rope Unit. Established by Pravin Gordon while in his position as Commissioner of SARS, the unit was established to spy on several departments and state bodies, including the National Prosecuting Authority. The establishment of the unit was in contravention of the statute law as well as South Africa's highest law, the Constitution. The staff and equipment used in the illegal activities of the unit were also found to be acquired illegally and constituted a severe breach in law. The public protector also found that Mr. Gordon also misled Parliament about meeting an influential member of the Gupta family. Sitting firmly at number 5 is the bizarre case of the Public Investment Corporation or the PIC. This state arm is responsible for administrating and making investments from state workers' pension funds amounting to about 2 trillion rands. However, Dr. Dan Majila, the former head of the PIC, denied allegations that he had given a loan of 21 million rands to his girlfriend. These allegations were brought to the public light by an anonymous whistleblower, James Nogu. The PIC has been known for its controversial dealings in the past, including loaning businessman Iqbal Suve 800 million rands to buy independent media. Coming in at number 4 is the qualification scandal. Several politicians are known to have falsified their qualifications. The exposés became imminent when Paolo Jordan, as a former Minister of Arts and Culture in the South African cabinet, admitted to having falsified his PhD. After him, Head of Engineering Services at Passenger Rail Agency of South Africa, Prasa, Daniel Mtinkulu, stepped down from his post after it was discovered that he had falsified his PhD too. South African Airways official Nico Bezedenheit and Dudu Mieni were also found to have misrepresented their qualifications on their CVs. Education is important, but it should be legitimately acquired. 
Number three has to go to Absa Bank for an illegal bailout acquired by the bank during the apartheid era. The bailout, which cost the state 2.25 billion rands, was unlawfully and illegitimately acquired by the bank. However, the bank's bailout was only a portion of the blatant and shameless corruption of the apartheid system. Project Spear was the report that initially exposed the corruption of the banking sector during the apartheid era. The report, released by UK-based CX, showed an additional 100 million rands invested into NetBank, despite siphoning billions of rands offshore. EPSA's growth and dominance in the banking sector has since been questionable, with these revelations being made public. The Stain of Saga takes number two as one of the worst corporate corruption scandals in the history of South Africa. The company's executives' earnings were knowingly inflated and losses obscured to the effect that the company had more worth than it really did. The revelations into the state of fraud and corruption at the company caused the company to lose half of its value in just the first day and about 99% of its value since. More than 280 billion rands or $18 billion was lost in monetary terms in 2017 alone. Our number one corruption scandal goes to the alleged collusion of banks which operate in South Africa. The collusion activities involved major names in the banking industry such as JP Morgan, HSBC, BNP and the Bank of America amongst others. Local and international banks allegedly used internet chat rooms to engage in corrupt activities, these being market allocation, the other side of the coin is price fixing. This is when competitors make collective decisions to set a minimum price on a product or service. This is of course fixed profits for these banks, while the consumer did not benefit from any kind of competition. That wraps up our top 10 for this week, please do stay tuned for next week's edition. In the meantime, make sure to subscribe, like and comment on all our social media platforms. We are at All Day TV. Until next time, adios.